Welcome to this video on how to buy stuff for EGR 401 and 402. The purpose of this video is to help you understand the purchasing process that goes on at ASU and to help you work within that process to be successful in completing your project. Your project budget is most likely to be between three and four thousand dollars. It turns out that your project budget will depend on the details of your project um, the agreement that's been reached by your industrial partner and so on but for most projects you can plan on a budget of three to four thousand dollars if you have any questions or concerns uh, check with the course instructor before you can buy anything so components services software pretty much anything you need to submit a preliminary budget and receive approval from the instructor and from your industry partner We'll cover the instructions for buying things, and we'll also cover the instructions for creating this preliminary budget. In your project planning, you need to remember that many items don't show up two days after you order them on your doorstep, so you'll need to take into account delivery time. In my experience, this is one of the major issues that causes more delays in projects than anything else. So, Make sure you understand what the lead times are for your items. Make sure that you've taken that into account in your project plan. The preliminary budget, we've created a template uh, that has the name you see on the slide. The idea is that in this preliminary budget, you essentially describe your bill of materials in terms of the parts and services that you're going to need. We especially want you to identify the critical parts and services. So critical are things that are expensive. So for example, if you're going to buy something that's uh, two thirds of your budget, you need to identify that and you need to give us some confidence that uh, this is a reasonable thing to buy. If you have things that will have long lead times, so they're being shipped from China or being shipped from Europe, or uh, the supplier has to manufacture them before they can ship them. Uh, this is something you need to identify. In order to be able to do this, you have to have a reasonably good bill of materials from your design. Each of these critical parts, that is parts that are expensive or have long lead times or will be difficult to acquire, needs to have justification. You should probably consider at least two different vendors from which you could purchase the part unless there's only one vendor that creates the things or sells the things that you are going to use. And you want to be able to justify why the thing you've chosen will result in a superior solution to the problem you're working on. We have two files that you will need to use in order to spend money. One is the preliminary budget file. The other is the purchase request file. You can find these as well as a PDF of the PowerPoint slides for this video on the Canvas site. If you go to the Canvas site, you should find a page that looks something like this. It won't look exactly like this because I haven't got it built yet because I'm still doing the video that it references. But basically it's about purchasing stuff in 401 and 402. There's a link to the budget document here. There's also a link to the purchase request, and then there's a link to the PowerPoint slides that I'm using for this video. There will also be a link to this video when it's done. This is not the proper link. So let's actually go through the preliminary budget spreadsheet. I'll show you what it consists of, and we'll put a couple of entries into it. So this is the preliminary budget spreadsheet. Up here you should put your project number and name. You should keep track of when you've updated it, so this would be the date, the, the month and the day and the year in which you last updated it. And then for each of the things that you're going to need to buy, you need to create a line in the budget. So suppose I need to buy a stepper motor, so I put in that I'm going to buy a stepper motor. I might need it by uh, September 1st. The description of the part or service, uh, this is where you would put the, uh, perhaps a more detailed description 
Uh, so for the stepper motor, you might actually have a part number and a vendor. So um, motors are us is the vendor and the part number okay indicate how many of these that you're going to need so we might have two suppose each of these stepper motors um, is a hundred dollars so you would expect two hundred dollars total it may cost uh, forty dollars to ship them uh, you also then in this column under vendors considered you want to describe the different vendors you looked into and justify the one you selected so in this case motors are us might have been the lowest cost vendor you probably want to go with the lowest cost vendor although there are times when you won't uh, so for example if motors are us is based um, in Europe somewhere and it will take uh, three to four weeks for them to ship me a motor you might consider looking at a different vendor that might have a higher price but will actually get you the motor in time for you to be able to do something with it we don't want you to spend money irresponsibly but at the same time getting an extra two or three weeks to actually work on your project instead of sitting around waiting for your stuff to arrive is probably a valid uh, reason for uh, sometimes paying more under justification you'll want to provide the reason or reasons that you want to select this particular um, uh, component so for example in this case I might have done some research in fact I better have done some research and I know the torque speed characteristics of the motor I need I know in the case of a stepper motor that it has the minimum step size that I need um, I know that uh, it has the holding torque that I need so the idea is under justification you want to describe why this particular motor is necessary for what you want to do and so the idea is as you go through your project bill of materials you'll put the part needed uh, the date that you would need it the description of the part and service how many you need how much you expect that to cost how much it's going to cost to ship and so on now if you are going to be buying say approximately thirty dollars of electrical components so typically when you build a circuit board uh, you might be buying you know 10 to 15 capacitors you might have several resistors maybe some other components like that um, you don't need to spell out those in detail so for example um, PCB components and I would need these by the 15th of September and so um, here I would put resistors capacitors and other discrete components for the PCB and rather than uh, spell out specifically the number of resistors the number of capacitors and the other components uh, you might be able to estimate the cost at about forty dollars for these and if you buy them from DigiKey you think the cost is going to be about ten dollars so the idea is this preliminary budget does not have to be exact we don't expect you to know at this point down to the penny how much you're going to need to spend we do at this point expect you to have identified those critical expensive or long lead time parts that you need to have finally when you get down to the bottom of your budget it totals it all up for you and it says at this point we have a budget of about two hundred ninety dollars so again the idea behind this it's not exact it's not necessarily final but it lets us know that you've thought carefully about what you need you know where to find what you need and you are going to be within the budget constraints that you have as you go through your project so that completes the discussion of the preliminary budget one thing we need to talk about is travel so for example um, in the past semesters we have had projects that are sponsored by industrial partners that are not in the Phoenix area 
And so students have traveled to see their industrial partner. We've had groups go down to Tucson. We actually had one group go to Iowa. If your project requires travel for any reason, we need to know about it early and you need to, it will take some extra work to make it work. The reason is that travel expenses are not allowable under the agreement that ASU has with the industrial partner. So industrial partners typically provide funding to support the project. This funding does not include any travel and cannot be used for travel. So if your industrial partner is asking you to travel, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your industrial partner realizes that this will be an extra expense for them. Um, if they're agreeable to that and they're willing to provide the extra funding necessary to do that, you should meet with me probably three weeks before the plan trip date um, be, to begin the approval process. ASU requires paperwork to be completed. And some of you are thinking, well, at this point, this sounds like more hassle than I'm willing to deal with. We'll just go on the trip and we'll pay for it ourselves. That's fine if you really want to do that. But even if you do that, you still need to complete the paperwork. The reason for that is if you are traveling on ASU business, ASU has insurance that could would cover uh, accidents or other potential losses while you're traveling. If you don't complete the paperwork to get the trip approved, then ASU's insurance will not cover anything that happens. So you're better off, ASU is better off if you go through the appropriate approval process. Um, and we can structure things. Again, if your industrial partner is willing to provide the funds, we can structure things so that uh, you can be reimbursed for expenses and it will work very well. So let's now talk about the purchasing process, how you can actually buy stuff. So the first thing you need to think about in the purchasing process is do you have an approved preliminary budget? Have you completed your preliminary budget? Has it been submitted to your instructor? And has your instructor agreed that yes, it makes sense? If the answer to that question is yes, then you may proceed to purchase stuff. If, if the answer to that question is no, then you may not proceed to purchase stuff. You need to go back and complete your preliminary budget and get it approved. If you have an approved preliminary budget, the next thing you need to do is complete the purchase request form. This is an Excel spreadsheet. You need to complete an Excel spreadsheet. You can't turn this into a Google Doc and send the link for reasons that are not entirely clear to me, but we have to honor. The Polytechnic School Business Office will require this as an Excel spreadsheet, and that's the only format that they will accept. You also need to complete one purchase request form per vendor. So if you want to buy some stuff on Amazon and some stuff from DigiKey, you would need to complete one form for Amazon and one form for DigiKey. And again, if the order is for a critical part that is something that's expensive or has a long lead time, make sure it's justified on your preliminary budget. You may at some point, and in fact, I would be entirely surprised if you don't at some point, end up having to update the preliminary budget to reflect changes as you learn specifically what you need to order. Once you've completed the request form or request forms, submit them to the instructor for approval. If your instructor approves, one of two things will happen depending on how you want to purchase the stuff. So one way to do this is that the business office, the Polytechnic School business office, will order the stuff that you're going to buy. So the idea is your purchase request has links to the vendor's website. Uh, the business office will use those links to purchase the stuff. Uh, they will use, um, I'm assuming they have credit cards that they'll use to pay for it. And um, it works generally quite well. What you need to understand is that approval, the approval process and the business office ordering process may take up to two business days. And you also need to understand ASU will not approve expedited shipping if it's going to cost more. So if your vendor says, well, in three weeks you can get this, or in one week, if you're willing to pay an extra $150 in shipping, you can get it, 
uh, you're stuck with the three weeks. ASU does have Amazon with two-day shipping. So it's not, as I understand it, Amazon Prime, but uh, they do have two-day shipping. So after the business office is placed and paid for the order, uh, the uh, supplier uh, fills your order and sends it, uh, ships it uh, to um, ASU. The order has to be shipped to ASU Central Receiving. Uh, some of you think it might be easier if the order were shipped to your house. I'm sure that's actually the case, but that doesn't work. ASU Central Receiving has to receive the order. ASU Central Receiving takes the order to the Polytechnic School Business Office, and then the Polytechnic School Business Office notifies you. This process may take up to two business days. So getting your purchase approved and the uh, interface between central receiving and the business office, that together can almost take up a week of time. So you need to make sure that you get your orders in, get them in early. Once your order arrives, you'll be notified and you pick up your order in Sutton Hall, uh, Suite 101. That's where the Polytechnic Business Office um, is located. An alternative is the following. There are some things that you can actually purchase from a local store. You know, so you go to Home Depot and buy some stuff. Uh, we have a process that allows you to do that. There are also situations where you have to do the ordering online. The business office can't do this. Uh, the situation that occurs most frequently is if you have a printed circuit board. Uh, printed circuit board purchases are typically done online, but in order for you to make that purchase, you have to upload your design files and so on. And that's beyond the skill of most of the business office employees. So if you're in that situation, basically you'll do the same thing up until the point where you are notified of the approval. And once you're notified of the approval, then you go to the business office, again, Sutton 101. And depending on whether you need to order something online or whether you're going to go pick up something locally, you'll get the following. So you can check out a P card, and a P card is basically a credit card that goes to an ASU account, and ASU has a lot of accounting controls on, but it's essentially a credit card. So you check out a credit card, the P card, and you can either order stuff online yourself. Um, again, uh, there is a computer available in Sutton 101, and you can do the order. Everything that you order online, even though you are doing the ordering, is shipped to ASU Central Receiving. Or you can go to a local store with the P-Card and buy stuff. You need to return the P-Card and the original receipts to the business office. Okay, another thing some of you may want to do is uh, the idea that you buy something, you spend your own money, and then you just get reimbursed for it. And that would be very convenient but it turns out it's very hard to make it work. This is the purchasing method of last resort. The idea that you buy first and then you get approval and reimbursement later. It's risky because you may not get approval for your purchase. And um, it's also risky because the business office may not reimburse you. If you do this, you gotta keep your original receipts. Uh, you will need to contact your instructor for the paperwork. And I need to be very clear about this. Amazon orders cannot be reimbursed. If you buy something off of Amazon, that's for your project. You have just paid money that you're never going to see again from ASU. We are strongly discouraged um, by the business office when it comes to reimbursement. Uh, again, if there are extenuating circumstances, talk to your instructor. We'll see what we can do to make it work. So I won't go over this slide in detail. Uh, these are ordering tips from the Polytechnic Business Office. When you're looking at vendors, uh, the Innovation Hub, which is in the Tech Center, does actually have basic supplies for a lot of projects. Uh, ASU has preferred vendors. There are a lot of other vendors that ASU will consider. There are some vendors that ASU will not use. So that completes this video. Hopefully at this point, you are clear on what you need to do to go forward in terms of purchasing stuff for your prototypes.